massageners. We're back working on the wing scapula. If you missed part one, go back and watch that because that's, that's a little bit more information plus the supine uh, position. And now we are doing the sideline and the prone position. So now that he's sidelined, you need to make sure that his uh, leg is being supported with a bolster and his neck. You want to make sure the cervicals are, you know, supported. So the main focus of this video is to work on the uh, serratus anterior, which is the main muscle for a wing scapula. So what uh, you want to do is you want to open up the arm, you know, and expose this area. And we already kind of warmed it up from when we did the uh, supine. But I want to do a little bit of the skin rolling. Remember, skin rolling is done before you apply any oil or anything like that and just maybe even some sea bowing to warm up the tissue. Once the tissue's warmed up, then you can start using some oil, some effleurage, petrosage. And this is the one that you can tell that it was a little bit more wing because it was more separate from the from the midline of the body. This was like over a little bit over three inches from the spinous processes. And the serratus anterior originates from ribs two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and it inserts on the front part of the scapula here. So we really can't get to it. You know, this is kind of like the um, medial part of the scapula, but you can get some of the rhomboids there. But you want to make sure and warm up this muscle. And I love the sideline position because you really expose the serratus anterior and all the origins here on the anterior part. So you want to make sure and warm it up. And remember, there are three main trigger points for the serratus. And one is like right underneath, you know, the, uh, the armpit. And another one refers like right around here and another one might refer down the arm too. So there's a uh, trigger points here. And if you're going to, uh, if he does have a trigger point, we're going to use our trigger point tool, which I know he had one somewhere around here when he was supine. Right there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right there's one and you want to hold it gently. You never want to take the pressure above a five because it might be too much, then you overstimulate the nervous system. And remember, relaxation begins with the nervous system. So you want to relax the nervous system, not make it worse. And of course, you ask your client always to take a deep breath. You can hold it up to 90 seconds and then just kind of soothe it afterwards. You can go back to it from a different angle. Like we, uh, we approached it from the supine position now I'm approaching it from the sideline position, and you can also approach it from the prone position. So you're, you're getting to the same trigger point from three different, different places because the tissue falls differently from different positions. So you can do some ringing here. Also of the serratus. Now once you've moved it and you've warmed it up, and you can also, you know, um, use this tool to relax some of the tissue here. And if you can, I'm not big enough, but if you, if you can, you know, hold at your waist, this arm at your waist, and then move it you know, at the same time that you're doing this, that, that will be great. But like I said, I'm really short, I'm only 4'11", so it's kind of hard for me to do some of these movements now. But once you've warmed it up, now you can get ready to do some of the movements of the scapula. So you're going to uh, let his arm bend a little bit, bend it so it really shows you know, the scapula here, you can even see a little bit of the hollow part here. So then you're going to uh, hold his arm right, like right at the medial part of the scapula. And you're going to try to, you're going to elevate and retract, you know, and then uh, retract, protract. 
retract and protract. You're going to kind of hook. Actually, it would have been better if I would have done it before the oil. So, but these are the movements. So you go protract the scapula out, then retract, and then elevate and depress. Elevate and depress. These are the movements of the scapula. So you want to protract, right, like from the rhomboids too. That's the, what the rhomboids move, the scapula. Then protract and then elevate from the ele elevator and the upper trap and then depress. Okay, so those are the movements that you can do with your client and try to move that scapula as much as you can to try to get some movement. Also, you, I'm doing this, like trying to grasp the scapula here. I'm going like anterior because this is another good way to even get to the subscapularis. So the subscapularis and the serratus are like almost right next to each other. The, the serratus sits against the ribs and the subscapularis is on the anterior part of the scapula. So they're very close together in proximity, but they're in the front part, the anterior part of the scapula. So this movement, I'm just trying to grab the edges of it. And like I said, the whole point is to loosen that scapula, to move it as much as possible so that you can get rid of that wing scapula. And this is another way that this isn't your, is this your broken wrist? Yeah, but yeah it is. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to grab the wrist. And <laughs> okay, this is another way to stretch, do a good stretch. You always want to assist. I'm going to sit down here so I can really work in detail with some of the trigger points. So I'm going to get my tool here and just go back again and work some of the trigger points. Going back to the same trigger point. I hold it there. He breathes for a few seconds. I usually move it around in a circular motion and I move, you know, like all around like in a diameter of about an inch just to make sure that I'm getting all the fibers that are, you know, associated with that. And also the bevel tool here in between the ribs. This is another great way to go from the, ins from the origins of the serratus. I'm going in between each rib. This is also very good uh, to work on people that have hard time breathing because this is a main muscle too to open up your rib cage along with the intercostals. So this tool is also used for this. And if you can grasp from the, uh, from the spinous processes out, and try to hook your fingers in between here. You're also working the rhomboids, the insertion of the rhomboids. And let me see, it's too far. I put this arm on. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you can try to hook from here. So you're already working the rhomboids and you're also working the serratus posterior superior because it's below the trapezius, below the rhomboids. So you're working that muscle too. And while you're here, you can also work the levator. Originates here in the transverse processes of C2, 3, and 4. So you want to make sure and work this area here. And the upper trap. 
and the insertion of the uh, levator is right here too. So these are the muscles that move the scapula. Remember, it's the rhomboids minor, major, serratus, uh, levator, upper trap, and middle trap and lower traps. All it, all three of uh, all three parts of the fibers move the scapula and the pec minor. So there's six muscles that move the scapula, even though 17, actually more like 20 insert if you count some of the uh, hyoid uh, muscles, but 17 to 20 muscles attach on the scapula, but only six move the scapula. So anyway, now we're gonna turn him prone. And remember that uh, the trapezius is like from T12, covers just a little bit of the scapula and it goes all the way to the uh, chromium process and then here also by the occipital ridge. So you wanna massage all these muscle attachments here and also the levator. Remember the levator elevates along with the upper fibers of the trapezius. And I, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm clasping up. You can get to the origin and the uh, insertion of the levator. I'm, I'm pushing up on the scapula so I can really get to the anterior part of the scapula right there where the insertion of the levator is. It's a good way to get to the levator. Sometimes it's a little stringy and also grasping the upper trap. And now it, you want to work on the rhomboids, the origins of the rhomboid minor is uh, from C7 to T1, and then the major is from T2 to T5, so th it looks, the fibers go this way. So you want to go to the origins, and it inserts right here. And then below that, you have the serratus posterior superior. Below the, the most superficial is the traps, then the rhomboids, then the serratus posterior superior. Okay, and another one that you can do is open up and expose the serratus anterior right here. And go down like all I'm doing is going down. And then you go superior. Just some long strokes all the way, all the way up to the chromium process. Just trying to relax that serratus as much as you can. Another movement too that you can do is from the opposite side of the table. I will go to this side and do the raking here on the serratus. Remember the serratus originates on the anterior part from ribs two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and some people all the way to nine. So you wanna do some raking. And the whole point is just to release this muscle and you know, sometimes the long thoracic nerve which passes through the, it innervates the serratus anterior, sometimes, you know, uh, is uh, trapped and it causes a freezing of the muscle or tingling or lack of movement. So you wanna make sure and warm up the serratus anterior, which is the main one for um, uh, frozen, I mean, not, not, yeah, for the wing scapula. So now that you're here, you know, you want to, again, you want to grab the scapula. I'm going to the inferior border of the scapula and just pushing it up and, uh, and I'm also grasping at the superior part of the scapula and just trying to get some movement here of the scapula. So I'm elevating and then I elevate with this one and then I depress by pushing it back down.
And I'm using my body weight kind of to sit down because <laughs> that way I can get some more movement on his scapula. It's all about creating and loosening up. Loosening up the fascia all around that scapula. All those six muscles that move the scapula. And I really like this one the best where you just let the arm hang down and, you know, go back and you warm it up because this is kind of cold. So warm up this tool and go all the way down. You're going even over the infraspinatus, teres major and teres minor. The, the rotator cuff muscles, you know, they all attach on the scapula, but they don't move the scapula. You've got your teres um, major and teres minor and supraspinatus, infraspinatus, all those muscles, but they don't move the scapula. They just attach on the scapula. So make sure you know the difference. We're working on the muscles that attach and move the scapula, which there's only six of them. So that's what we're trying to do here. And again, you always want to assist the arm. And bringing it back and reaching closure with your client, you know, after you beat them up, and, whoops, after you've beat them up and gone to do some deep work, you want to go back and do some soothing work. My work is mainly neuromuscular, you know, addressing the trigger points. Oh, the one, another one of the trigger points here for the um, serratus is along this area here, usually where the insertion is of the rhomboids too. So you want to make sure and check this point here. See, make sure that they don't have a trigger point there. But if you address the trigger points and add some movement, it should really help somebody with wing scapula. So we have part one where I do a little bit more explanation and show you how to measure to see if they have the wing scapula. So make sure to go back and watch part one. And the part two is the prone and the sideline. So until the next time, create a great day.